Welcome everybody Recording to our community in forum. We're so excited <laughs> that you're here. Uh, and, uh, and again, we apologize for being a little late. Uh, I'm just gonna run through a few protocols for a community meeting. And so before we do that, uh, let me, sorry, I'm collecting myself from our previous, our previous meeting. So uh, I just want you to all uh, be here, fully present. Uh, tame the technology, uh, uh, assume the best intentions for everybody. There, uh, there are no wrong questions today. If there's any lingo that we are using that you don't understand, please raise your hand immediately and ask if you're confused. Uh, 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 recognize that we need each other's help. So please be kind uh, through the meeting. We need all of us to, to do this work and model good citizenship, talk to each other, not at each other. And with that, uh, I, I'm gonna give it to, to Jen and to Suzanne. And today we're gonna learn a little bit more again about our current state and talk about our priorities for our budget. And the main purpose of our meeting really is to build trust with the communities and by intentionally engaging with you and all the members so that we can collaborate in the future of all of our communities. So with that, Jen and Suzanne, yeah, great. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, we've prepared a brief presentation for you just so that everybody has sort of a common learning experience before we break into breakout rooms. So Alicia Lightford is going to share her screen and pull up the presentation. Let Alicia do that and then Suzanne and I will get started. Great. Thank you, Alicia. So again, as Flora said, we're really hoping to get a sense of um, some planning and priorities from you, thinking about our vision before we build the budget. Next slide, please, Alicia. I'm gonna share just a little bit of context with you tonight um, regarding the mission statement, the implementation plan, and the recovery plan or the plan for moving forward. We've got a little bit of data to share with you. We wanna make sure that you're clear um, as a public about our timeline. And then the majority of our time we're gonna to spend together in small groups and time permitting, we'll come back and do a whole group debrief. Next slide, please, Alicia. So front and center, we wanna put our mission statement. So please take a minute and read that mission statement to yourselves. Thanks, Alicia. Next slide. We also, the work that we've been doing for years uh, regarding our implementation plan is grounded in this particular theory of action. Again, really thinking that if we are focused on high quality instruction and interventions, um, that we ensure that we're responsive to our learners' interests and our needs, that we have very clear learning targets about what our kids need to know and be able to do, and that we're measuring them in a really comprehensive and balanced way that we will um, eliminate the differences in performance between student groups. This language was from 2016. And our language as we continue to learn and explore and grow, our language is um, changing as well. So we're talking less about achievement gaps and more about differences in student performance from various uh, groups. Next slide, please, Alicia. So in October, we had a community forum and um, there weren't a lot of people there. It's thrilling to see so many people here today. I just want to recap a few of the highlights from the community forum. So these were our prompts. What questions do you have? What are our current strengths as a district and what are our current areas for improvement? And the bullet points that I've included on this slide um, are representative, but they're not comprehensive. So Again, a lot of focus on how are we meeting all of our students' needs? That's that multi-tiered or multi-layered system of support. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and how are we ensuring that the supports and our student needs are aligned? Um, strengths, you can see right there what people have expressed some gratitude for in our school system, art and sports and technology and um, all of the work around caring for our community that we do our belief in, um, in the capacity of all children to learn and uh, gratitude for our, our board 
And then our areas for improvement, a lot around outcome data and measurement um, and wanting more, more data on student growth and improving communication. And I would say actually two, two meetings ago, we were just in the Ed Quality Committee meeting talking exactly about outcome data and measurement um, and setting goals for achievement. And the board has made a concerted effort to engage the community more. So um, October's forum and tonight are two of those um, manifestations of that effort. Thanks, Alicia. Next slide. So again, to recap, this is part of the implementation plan from two, it was uh, started in 2016 all the way to 2021. As you know, there have been some disruptions since then. We'll talk a little bit about that too. But to highlight some of the key points we made last time, really briefly, um, clear, clear learning targets have become part of our routine use in our practice. We um, created a report card revision process at the elementary school a few years ago to align them to our standards and performance indicators for kids. We've done a revision of our standards in global citizenship and um, science recently, uh, understanding now that we wanted to create more flexibility for students. And we have a much more clearly articulated process for personalized learning plans at the middle and high school. Next slide, please, Alicia. In terms of comprehensive and balanced support, uh, sis, uh, a system assessment system. Um, we continue to tweak our comprehensive assessment plan each year based on um, various conditions and the feedback that we get from teachers and our experience. Also, the state has um, been responsive to the pandemic and they've changed the statewide assessments over the year. A major um, lift for us right now is really thinking about the tiers or layers of support that we offer students and how to articulate more clearly roles and responsibilities and how to create a more flexible and nimble system. Um, our students are graduating under uh, proficiency-based graduation requirements, which is thrilling. We've aligned those standards pre-K through graduation. And um, again, we're looking at building more opportunities for students to do some self-assessment and reflection through the personalized learning plan in particular at U32. Next slide, please, Alicia. The third objective in this plan is high quality instruction and intervention. We have increased our um, instructional coaching and we're building a coaching culture, working really hard to do that in our district. Um, we've had some real clear uh, learning expectations over the years regarding responsive classroom restorative practices, the teacher advisory um, system, and positive behavior interventions and supports. And um, callback is another example, I'd say, of how we're trying to be flexible to meet students' needs. Next slide, please, Alicia. Last year, we the state required us to write uh, an, a recovery plan or a moving forward plan. And some of you who are here tonight um, engaged in that process with us as well. The three pillars of that plan are listed right there on the slide in front of you. And I have to say, when we submitted that plan on June 1st of 2021, um, we couldn't have predicted the Delta variant and the continued impact of COVID in our schools. And so some of what we articulated in that plan has not yet come to fruition. Some of it hasn't even started quite yet because we're still very much in the throes of the virus. Although with the recent approval of the vaccine for students ages five to 11, um, we're seeing some more light at the end of the tunnel. Next slide, please, Alicia. So again, a little bit more, um, just a few touch points for you um, around social emotional learning. That's what SEL stands for, mental health and well-being. You can see that um, last year we said had a, a significant increase for the need of um, school counselors, elementary through middle school, and we have employed more counseling um, in our schools this year as part of our response plan. Um, and a reminder that our students have not had a typical school year since the 2018-19 school year. So we're dealing with that too. I wrote about that a couple of weeks ago in the community letter, just some of the um, behaviors and, and uh, manifestations of uh, not being in school on a regular basis for a while. Next slide, please, Alicia. When we envisioned engagement, uh, 
in terms of truancy wasn't a big issue for us last year. We were able to hold um, in-person school for uh, pre-K through eighth grade. We had a robust remote learning option and our students in the high school had a really um, predictable and wonderful uh, hybrid model. So we were looking at engagement as bringing our communities back into our buildings and our schools in ways that they hadn't been able to do so before. We are not quite there. We're still allowing only essential providers to enter our buildings. Um, and we've had more cases of COVID impacting our schools so far this year than we did all of last year. Next slide, please, Alicia. And this is just a little snapshot to let you know that in that local comprehensive assessment plan, we continue to look at our student data. This is just a snapshot from our iReady Math Diagnostic assessment. We administered it um, in grades K through 10 this fall. K was optional, so there are just a few kindergarten students who took it in the fall. They'll take it again in the winter. And this is just to show you that based on where we would have expected them to be in the fall on this diagnostic, that 73% of our kids were exactly where we'd expect them, that 11% were close, and 16 were really percent were um, at risk and really needing some more specialized and targeted supports. We use that data. In fact, teachers use that data today to do some analysis and planning for instruction. Next step. Next slide. And this is the slide that indicates that Suzanne's going to take over for a little bit. So Suzanne, next slide. Hi, uh, this slide illustrates annual enrollment trends by school building from 2018 to the current fiscal year. District enrollment has decreased by 88 students over this time period. Berlin has decreased from 217 students to 209, Callis from 126 to 108, Doty from 80 to 79. East Montpelier has increased from 229 to 239 students. Romney had a decrease of 176 to 142, and U32 decreased from 766 to 729. Next slide, please, Alicia. This slide illustrates the changes in enrollment from 2018 to 2021 by building using percentages. Total district enrollment has decreased 5.52%. Berlin's enrollment has decreased 3.69%. Callis, 14.29%. Doty, 1.25%. East Montpelier's increase was 4.37%. Romney had a decrease of 19.32%. And U32, 4.83%. Next slide, please, Alicia. So in summary, what are the takeaways from this? We've had decreases overall in Berlin, Callis, Doty, Romney, and U32. East Montpelier had a lovely increase. And uh, all schools but U32 experienced significant enrollment decreases in FY21 due to the pandemic. These are important because Vermont's education funding formula is based upon cost per student. So a decrease in enrollment negatively impacts the tax rate before any changes are made to our budgets. And as the budget process goes on, we'll talk more about that uh, per, per student spending. But a significant change this year is that the excess spending threshold has been suspended. So uh, that's a, a really nice uh, factor that we don't have to consider as much as in past years. Next slide, please, Alicia. Uh, the general fund budget of $34,984,949 was approved by the taxpayers for this current fiscal year 21-22. The largest pieces of the pie are direct instruction for regular ed, which is in dark blue. Uh, this represents 34.35% of the budget. Direct instruction special ed is in red, and that's 20.52% of the budget. Uh, support services such as guidance, uh, nursing, library, tech integration, and curriculum are 15.84% of the budget. And all others, um, total up the smaller pieces of the pie. Next slide, please, Alicia. This diagram illustrates the various funding sources that offset the general fund expense budget. Two sources make up most of the revenues with 79.44% coming from education spending, which is the purple piece, 
and 13.69% from special ed expenditure reimbursements. Next slide, please, Alicia. This is a snapshot of the budget timeline showing the key dates in November and December, especially highlighting the community forum tonight and the next one on December 1st. The first draft of the F FY23 budget will be presented to the board uh, November 17th, and the second draft is planned for December 15th. The Washington Central Leadership Team is integrated throughout the process with multiple team meetings in addition to individual meetings between principals and the central office team. So facilities director, IT director, director of special services, myself and the superintendent have been meeting with principals uh, discussing various pieces of their budgets. In addition to this, the leadership team is also seeking input from staff through an engagement survey right now. Next slide, please, Alicia. And this is where Jen takes it again. Jen. Sorry, years ago, yep, got it. Um, so a number of years ago, I took a course in school business management and the instructor of that course talked about the importance of the budget um, really being a narrative, a story that told the story of our values as a school system. There are lots of ways to measure our values. And so we wanna put this question out to you, what are the measures of student success or the indicators of student success that are reflecting what our community and our board values and how, how do we reflect them in our budget? So we've just listed for you lots of things that we consider and again, we were just talking about some of this at the Education Quality Committee meeting earlier this evening. The progress toward our student learning outcomes, our uh, students' assessment scores, attendance data, participation in various programs and co-curriculars, our graduation rate, post-secondary outcomes. These are the things that we hope that you'll consider. This is why budgeting really should be a year-long process. We're in the throes of it right now, but the things that we attend to as a board and as a community should be directly related to the budget all the time. We should be able to draw that particular line. Um, next slide, please. So uh, last month on October 20th, we had a school board meeting. It coincided with the um, Vermont Association for the Education of Young Children uh, annual conference where our own Callie Weller, pre-K teacher at Callis, was honored as Vermont's early childhood educator of the year. And um, it, Callie was the first public school pre-K teacher to receive this grant and kudos to Suzanne for finding this quote and bringing it here because it really captures the essence I think of, um, of what we're doing right now the things that we're wrestling with and the things that you we want us to, in, you, to have you engage with us about so that we can figure this out and it's really about balance. We want to be able to do our jobs and um, and serve our kids so that they, our kids and our families, get everything that they need and that they deserve. And that tricky part is the balance. Um, so take a minute to enjoy Callie's quote, and um, and then we'll move on. All right, Alicia, next slide. So we're going to be going into breakout uh, rooms in just a few minutes. And, um, and so I'll talk to you about the logistics in a minute, but these are the focus questions. And we probably have more questions than we're gonna ultimately have time for. Our attendance is robust tonight, so that's good. Um, and so we highlighted the first three, um, just to spend the most time of those in those. And if your group has an opportunity, go to the fourth one. I will post these um, in the chat for you all so that you have them present in your breakout rooms. But we really want to know um, what are the aspects of our district that you're finding most meaningful. Let's talk about resource allocation, both time and money. What are we spending too much time and money on? What are we not spending enough time and um, money on right now from your perspective? And if you get an opportunity to list um, programs and services that reflect your values um, for Washington Central and that you think that we should be prioritizing, let us know that as well. Next slide, please, Alicia. All right, so here are the logistics. 
Um, in just a couple minutes, we're gonna divide into our breakout rooms. They are named by color. Our board members and our administrators have been pre-assigned and, um, and they will go in there so that there's a distribution across schools and across towns. Guests, you are invited to join a breakout room of your choice. Um, we're just asking, we've got 54 people and seven breakout rooms. So just distribute yourselves in a way that helps you get to about groups of eight-ish, right? Um, if you get to a group and there are lots and lots of people in it, duck out and go to another one. We're going to strive for equal numbers to the extent that, um, that we can do it. If you need help with the, getting into a breakout session, if the Zoom technology is sort of new for you, Mark uh, Klein, our director of tech, and I will stay back and just help navigate that a little bit. So don't worry if you don't know how to do it right away. We'll talk you through it. When you're in your small groups, please ensure that all voices are heard. Every, everybody's voice is important. So make sure our board members are going to be facilitating those groups. Our administrators will take some notes. But make sure that you're also centering your conversations on those focus questions. Um, and then time permitting, we'll come back to the groups, uh, to the large group and do a quick report out, um, just a key takeaway from your groups. We had put the breakout groups lasting sort of question mark minutes because we weren't sure what to expect tonight for attendance. They're set up right now for 30 minutes and floor, if you think 30 sounds good. Yep, I'm seeing thumbs yeah. up. Great, we'll go ahead and keep those breakout rooms for 30 minutes. Um, and then next slide, Alicia. I just wanna give you all a, a quick heads up that at the end of the evening, um, we're gonna ask for um, your feedback. And the form is right on the, we'll have it right there in the chat, thank you. We'll also, it's linked on the um, board's webpage of the district website, but be thinking about what's going well for you tonight, what inspired you to come? What other topics might be of interest? Um, how can we generate even more participation? So Alicia, if possible, can you go back to that the previous slide? Thanks. So again, we're gonna go into breakout sessions in just a minute. Mark's gonna invite us to do that. And if you um, don't quite know how to do that yet, just stay put and, and Mark and I will help you do that. So Mark, go ahead and, um, and open up the breakout sessions. Actually, Jen, I'm doing it. I'm running oh. just a little off on that. I've almost got everybody assigned. So if we oh, good. Just... All right. Thank you, Stephen. So we'll give Stephen a minute. Thanks. Totally forgot. I was the planning from before. It takes a village to run these things. And, uh, and so we called on our friends to help. Um, Alicia, thanks for doing those uh, slides too. That was a lot smoother to have some support in that way too. So when Stephen's got them ready, you'll be invited on in. It looks like we can do three community members per group. So try to look at that so that every group has some community members. I'm almost there. No pressure. Enjoy the gallery view right now, everybody. When check out your friends and neighbors who've come <laughs> out tonight. It's kind of nice to see everyone's faces. Jen, can you put the um, focus questions in the chat there, or? Yeah, um, I would. I'll that do that like right. That. Yes, Lisa, I'll do that right now while we're waiting. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. They may not follow us into the breakout room so you might have to do it again to send it to the breakout rooms okay thank you i hope everybody this was really wonderful i hope everybody had as much of a discussion as we did so let's go ahead and start sharing sharing out and let's just go group by group by group and i'll start with brad and so jonathan lindy cat and chris so we had a wonderful group. Everyone has just worded things so kindly. It was wonderful. Um, some of our key takeaways from the, the things that we value the most about our district um, or is most meaningful to our district is that we are welcoming and accessible um, to our community in all of our buildings and that we are really community focused. 
under the, what are we spending too many resources on? No one wanted to go that far to say it's too many, but there were some questions and some wonders. Um, uh, the, and those circled around the per pupil spending, but it's also acknowledgement that that is a, a part of being in Vermont um, and having smaller schools. Some questions around the way that we manage supplies and the wastefulness, how we make decisions about what to keep and to store. Um, I think there was a funny comment about, have you looked in the attic in this building? Yeah, it's all of our buildings. Um, uh, some questions about the way that we are uh, spending, allocating money on our physical plants and some comparisons to some local school districts that are experiencing some trouble um, and the amount of employees or staffing at central office, just to noticing that, that it's been changing over the years and questions about what that might look like compared to other similarly sized districts. Um, for the areas where we're maybe not you know, putting enough in, there was a real uh, value placed on having, um, not being top heavy when it comes to talking about building principles, that, that we need building principles um, in each one of our schools and a value around a consistent face um, in our front office, the, the support staff in our front office. Um, there was a lot of conversation around sub shortages and um, unknown needs in students that are new to our district this year, just the really big feeling around that and the, uh, the hardship on our special educators. Um, the challenges with all of us being short staffed um, and what that means for the way that we allocate time for professional development when we can't get a sub for a teacher to go and engage in professional development, what that means for what does the special educator do or the classroom teacher do when we can't get a staff member or a sub. Uh, and I think we, we ended on the most important note of the appreciation for the arts and theater and co-curricular in our district and a kind of a call out to the board to um, re-examine the changes that happened in those areas from last year. Anything I'm missing, Lisa, Amy, Chris, Lindy? That's it. Great. Thank you, Kat. We're gonna go now with, I'm just gonna go in order of the groups here. So Orange, and that would be Gillian. Gillian, Michelle, that was my group. Okay, so in terms of what aspects of the district are most meaningful, a um, lot of recognition of the handling of the pandemic and the district's ability to step back and reflect on priorities and translate that into direct action. Um, a recognition that work has been done to um, that we capitalize on our strengths and look to the future. Uh, shout out to the TA system and the importance of students in the high school having uh, adults that they can have with them throughout their career there and they can connect with. Um, all the co-curriculars that add so much, um, the collegial relationships and outside learning opportunities. In terms of what are we spending too many resources on in terms of time and money, one of the, uh, we really talked a lot actually about time in terms of this one, um, looking at sporting events and the amount of travel that needs to happen for sporting events for kids on teams just the cost of time and uh, that, you know, kids traveling an hour and then the financial cost of the transportation. Do kids then have a healthy balance in their time? Um, questions about whether or not there are inequities about the behaviors and expectations for student athletes. Um, are those the same as the expectations for students and other extracurriculars? And also just sort of recognizing that this year with the pandemic, um, do we really need to look at um, what are some things that we can put on the shelf and what can we do to support staff? The What are we spending too little money on? We had a uh, conversation about life skills. Uh, some talk about the financial literacy skills that we have the financial literacy class, but um, wondering if it gives enough sort of real world experience concerned about young people leaving high school 
and getting into all kinds of debt. Um, and then also not just financial literacy, but all kinds of like the basic how to be an adult life skills. Uh, I'd like to see more proactive health education, um, substance use and pre prevention, getting the information to kids really being proactive, uh, developing after school programs for the elementary schools that get kids outside and engaged in nature. Uh, developing, we'd like to see more develop uh, cross-curricular learning opportunities, solving real problems with multiple disciplines, and a concern that we're not giving the teachers the supports that they need to do what they feel is best. And the three programs, the prioritized programming would be uh, the idea of having in the elementary schools, really thinking about what are the resources that each of us have. The example was used of the sugar house at East Montpelier and the garden at Berlin. And is there a way that we can get creative and think about how students from the elementary schools can, you know, that it's not just Berlin's garden, can, how can kids from other schools come there? Uh, support the tiers of support for students with social and emotional needs. Um, providing positive experience and opportunities for all students. Um, look at programming like a three-legged stool, academic, social, and emotional, and make sure that we're balancing those three legs. Um, put a priority on investing in the, um, in the primary grades in the early years, pre-K to grade two, building that foundation. And finally, a priority and an idea of we've got some families moving in. So what is it that brought them to our towns and our schools? And if I missed anything, anybody else can jump on in. Thanks, Gillian. Uh, let's move on to yellow. Diane, Caroline, Stephen, and Stephen. So in this group, um, what was most meaningful was focusing on the mental health of staff, administration, students, um, and really having that as a top priority. Um, some uh, question more than a statement about if there were challenges in communication being a unified district and being that we are virtual this year um, and wondering what else could be done in, um, to have more engagement and more communication. Uh, there was nothing identified as spending too much money or time on. Um, and then in, for spending too little, um, getting a better idea of how we can get the community and communicate with the community about how they can be of service to everyone who works in the school, um, teachers, administrators, and even the school board, and just really communicating what the needs are so that community members can be supportive um, and doing more with post-graduation outreach and connecting post-grads so they can talk about their experiences, jobs they've had, where they've moved to, um, et cetera. And that, those are the highlights from our group. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Green, Maggie, Ursula, Alicia, and Jess. So the things we talked about being most meaningful um, for the school community, just a strong, uh, just a really strong school community, happy children, a really warm school environment. It's great to hear this, not only at the elementary schools, but through students' time in Washington Central as they travel up to U32. Um, the fact that we are a district that is rural and we have resources that expand beyond the school building, like farms and trails. Um, the community really values education and supports our budgets, small schools, um, with a community presence at the elementary level and also looking forward to the bigger pool when students get to the U32 level. As far as spending too much resources, time or money, um, some of our community members felt that it was hard to gauge right now. And I think that is in part due to the fact that our parents aren't able to get into our buildings a whole lot. Um, but it's some preferences around place-based education, outdoor education, um, not spending so many resources on tech, um, 
Although there is a value in, in using technology, a time and a place for it, but not having all of our resources put in there. Um, also, we talked about the balance of testing, um, not putting too much weight on all of the assessments and testing that we do, but also recognizing testing is important to ensure that we're identifying students who need additional support. Um, and just making sure that um, we're not spending too much money in any one area specifically. We talked a lot about technology. And then as far as spending too little resources on, um, we talked quite a bit about just cross-disciplinary, um, you know, farm-based education, place-based education, outdoor education, wanting to make sure teachers have the resources to make this happen. Talked a little bit about um, farm to school and eco in some of our classrooms and making sure that that, that goes beyond just the primary grades. There was a question around whether or not there could be a special position um, uh, maybe called a partnership coordinator or something like that, who provides that outdoor project-based learning experiences for students. We also talked about the lack of language programs in our elementary schools, specifically Spanish. Um, there's some interest in having more money spent on help providing healthy food options in our schools, thinking about arm to table and other things like that. And then the question came up around, do educators have enough time for planning? There, um, our educators are working under immense pressure. Is there adequate money to allow teachers to pursue continuing their education and take the time that they need to do this? And then finally, um, programs and services wanting to see, we talked about personalized learning plans and introducing these at the elementary level. Um, and this might help families think about ways to engage their children's education at the younger grades. We talked about the importance of the arts and um, other districts have things like um, arts academies, sustainability academies, what could this look like in our district and perhaps a further conversation with our friends of education could help with this. Um, and just really anything that can support outdoor and place-based education. And, and if I miss anything, other members of my group, please chime in. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, Blue, uh, Carrie, Jill, Aaron, Julia. Thanks, I'll speak for the Blue group. So, <clears throat> Briefly, we talked about in terms of aspects of our district that are most, most meaningful, definitely positive relationships between adults and students um, and, a, and a committed a community across the board. Um, we talked about, however, equity needing improvement. Um, we talked about what we feel we spend too much on, too many resources on, and we actually had uh, kind of both sides of the spectrum around special ed, uh, both feeling that is not enough, um, but also too much in that area. Uh, we also talked about a little bit about the length of the school day, had a discussion around, um, you know, U32 making efforts in that. And, uh, you know, really that could be something that um, we should be talking more about and the benefits of that. Uh, in terms of what are we spending too little on, um, conversation around uh, engaging the less engaged student, uh, meaningful STEM activities and, and service learning were topics that were, were shared and talked about. Um, having strong academic programs at the early grades, um, ensuring that um, those building blocks are secure for, for all students at the early levels, uh, especially in reading. Um, we talked about how we could better market our district to attract more families and also more resources around pre-K. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Hey, purple, could I have a spokesman for purple? Cara or Liz? Sure, I'll go for the purple group. Um, we spent some time talking about in terms of what's most meaningful for the, um, the folks in the group. There was an expression of gratitude uh, for technology and one-on-one -on -one technology access throughout the district and a breadth of educational opportunities, including art and music and athletics, in addition to academics. Um, we discussed uh, 
the meaningfulness of learning being accessible to all students. And then an extension of that was gratitude that U32 staff have been very responsive to needs shared um, regarding our BIPOC students. Um, and then gratitude expressed related to willingness and flexibility and adjusting learning from our challenges as needed. Um, we didn't spend any time on spending where we may be spending too many resources of time or money. <clears throat> we were really fortunate to have time um, with a parent that had a lot of information, resources, um, and passion related to decolonizing the syllabi and the curriculum. Um, and so we talked quite a bit about having more resources to support our faculty and their skill set there. Um, and how, how do we deconstruct racism as it's embedded with, uh, within our curriculum? That was a really interesting and valuable conversation. Um, and then talked about having more resources to have time and space to think critically about a nuanced approach and to support staff in building their skill set there. Um, and again, looking at systemic race issues and what contributes to racism within our own schools. Um, and what do we value most? Um, there were some questions about how do we um, measure success and um, how do we think about and talk about when our students are not meeting academic standards and expect expectations? Um, and also some conversation about making sure that we don't spread ourselves too thin with various initiatives in an attempt to increase the amount of students that are meeting expectations. Purple group, is there anything that I left out that you'd want to share? No, all right, thank you. I, sorry, I was muted. It's really nice to see the little one in the lower window. A pink a spokesman, Susanna or Amy, Chris, and Jonas. So hi. Um, we actually had a very good uh, conversation. Sounds like uh, good conversations were had, had all around. Uh, and what really stood out for the most valued part of our district uh, was that the, um, by and large, everyone felt that students were the focus and taken good care of. And it was the student, um, the um, elementary schools and teachers, and I'm sure this is true at U32, um, really focused their attention on what the students' needs were, and not academic needs, it's just their student well-being first. Um, the um, folks were very glad that, that uh, teachers actually knew the students, knew them not just by name, but knew who they were, what they were like, what their personalities were. And so it's that, that smallness uh, generating these relationships early on that would follow students throughout the, their career at U32 was very um, strong. Um, um, component of what they, uh, our group liked uh, about our district. Also like the civic uh, civility of our, our district. Um, we may have disagreements, uh, but no one's coming in with uh, threatening school board members or anything like that. So we still have and maintain that, that level of civility. Um, the was actually move here intentionally into our district. Huh? Hello? Uh, move intentionally into our district um, because of what our district has to offer into the towns in our district. Um, in terms of what too much, in terms of resources or time, there was not a, um, a the, the, people didn't think that we were spending too much time or resources on any particular thing. Um, the, there was a sense that uh, we could appreciate the expertise that we already have in our community uh, when we are um, talking about initiatives like the curriculum review uh, and how when we have experts from outside the district coming in, uh, we should work in a co um, collaborative way, uh, taking into account the expertise that we already have here uh, and working together with um, if we need a, a, a second set of eyes from outside of the district uh, and have that. Um, there was some concern that we don't have enough of the, that one of our members really liked that we have Spanish um, at the elementary level. And that would be we, uh, uh, a participant from Middlesex and hoping that we could have more, more Spanish and a foreign language at the elementary level. 
Um, what we have too little of, uh, the sense was that um, not enough technology in terms of really um, making it easier for staff members to communicate. Um, what um, more in terms of arts and um, we want more uh, sense of more rigor later in the academic life of our students uh, and more attention for students who um, deal with issues of poverty. Um, and more, out to, more outdoor, um, integrating the outdoors more into our learning process. Uh, so I think that's it. Please, any other pink members um, speak up if I missed a uh, salient point. Thanks. Can I just throw one thing in that we didn't get to talk sure. about because our time ran out? Um, as a community member, I really feel that given the trauma that students have gone through with everything going on in the world with um, COVID, racial tension, all of it, that we need more support for our educators, but we need more counselors for our kids because the effects of this are not going to go away quickly. And um, I think our school counselors are already pretty overloaded in what they're doing and trying to manage that. So I think that will be, I think that's important for us to look at when we're building a budget for our community. Thank, thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly. And thank you, Chris. And I believe that's that's all our, our groups. So I'm gonna pass it on to, to Jen and I wanted to share something that our group one of the members of our group, which usually doesn't like to be named, but she said, capitalizing the good things we have and look to the future with hope and courage. So I wanted to leave us with that message from Alice. <laughs> and I also wanna thank Erica and, Washington, and friends of Washington Central for, for being here and for helping us bring people. Yeah, thank you everybody. I put um, in the chat one more time the feedback form and we really would welcome your feedback we're so grateful that you came i know um, for the board and the administrators we really want to hear from the community um, we do feedback forms at every in-service day also and we read that feedback and then we plan accordingly so that we can get better and better uh, Again, sort of, I, I talk about in the spirit of continuous improvement all the time, but we, we mean it. We read it and then we tweak accordingly so that um, these forums and opportunities are meeting your needs. So please take a minute when you can to, um, to do that feedback form in the next day or so. And um, I know that the steering committee and the community engagement crew focused on that goal for the board will read that those comments and we'll plan accordingly. So thank you again for being here. Um, and again, next steps, we'll consider this feedback as we continue to build a budget that's reflecting our values. So thank you everybody. If we have a little bit of board business, do, and so if you wanna stay with us, please be our guest. And if you wanna go, and spend some time with your kids. Thank you again for being here with us. And it's nice to see all the kids' faces in your little windows too. So, so thank you again and take care of yourselves. Thank you for being here. Good night, thank you. Okay, so it looks like we dropped down to 39 people. So we have some brave ones staying with us still. It, Lindy. Can I count on you for the next one? I was all ready. I just didn't want to. I know. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I make a motion to approve the new teacher nomination of George Ann Baker at Recording Alice in progress. As a reading interventionist. Second. Thank you, Lindy. Thank you, Scott. Any discussion? Seeing none, all of, the, all, of, uh, all of those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, um, I'll make a motion to approve the extended leave of absence request for um, Amy Conan Bear, Bauer, I never say it right. Um, the dates as shown on the form for December 17th through January 18th, I believe is the extension. 
Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of extending the leave, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's all so, that's on the form. Yeah. <laughs> well, I make a motion to adjourn. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice. Okay. I'm hungry. So, yeah, yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good night. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank night. you for being here. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.